Hey, this is Chris Strong with RapidScan 3D. Uh, today we are going to go ahead and showcase the Artec EVA Lite 3D scanner. If you're familiar with Artec 3D, you've probably seen this scanner around. This is their flagship system. Uh, Artec does have a variety of different scanners from the micro to scan really small parts like a small screw to the Artec Ray, which can scan a building or a plane. So today we got the Artec EVA Lite. Now there is a full version of the EVA as well. Uh, basic difference is full version of the EVA has the ability to capture color as well as track by color. This is very useful if you don't want to use targets. It will use the geometry of the object as well as color to align. Now today we're showcasing the, Le the EVA Lite, which doesn't have the ability to capture color, which for this application is irrelevant, but it also doesn't have the ability to track any texture. So the benefit to this system over the EVA or the Leo is that it's about half the price of the Eva. So we're definitely going to show you how this will work and how the advantages of, of it is when you are in a budget conscious uh, situation, you're looking for something at a lower cost, the Eva light is great. So um, today we're going to be scanning the floor mats area of this Ford F-150 and the idea behind it is to make some custom made floor mats. Now because it can't track any color, We've got a couple of little artifacts here that I'm going to place on the pan area and we're going to use this to track the geometry. Now, if you know about the Leo, it is a all in one system that has its own battery and own computer. So it's very mobile. Now the Artec Eva and Eva Lite, they do need power. So today I got an Artec uh, battery right in here and this is going to power the scanner. I do have my laptop in the uh, center console of the truck. So we're gonna scan directly into there. So uh, you're gonna soon see Artec Studio come up. And right now you're gonna see a little live preview of what we're scanning. So I got a few artifacts in here. What we're gonna go ahead and do, let's go ahead and scan it. So when I'm scanning, uh, basically, I want to make sure I get some of those artifacts in that scan data. So because the part area doesn't have a lot of geometry or color changing color, we're using those to track. So as you see, we did lose some tracking. So what I want to do is actually try to find that area where I lost and kind of get back into it. Now, if the scanner can't find it, that's no problem. Click stop. I have my one scan and I'm gonna go ahead and scan again. When I, do want, when I do scan, I want to get some common overlap over those artifacts so that I can match the scans together. And I'm going to do one more and I'm going to try to get that little uh, area on the back. So I think I'm good, I got three scans. Now we're gonna go in and go into the software. We're gonna align those scans. I'm also gonna show you how to delete those artifacts that you see here. And then we're gonna go ahead and uh, create a mesh and move on to the next part of creating that custom made format. All right, so now we have the three files or three scans that you'll see in the uh, workspace here. And you'll notice they're not aligned to each other. So I'm gonna go through this process kind of quick, but uh, let's go ahead and get everything aligned. Uh, process is really easy. What we're gonna do is just take some common points that we know on the part. I'm gonna use those artifacts as my uh, spots. 
I'll tell the software to align it. And you'll see very quick how it aligns. I'm just going to take that third one. And I can move this around how I like. And I'm just going to do the same thing. You'll notice that I'm not doing anything uh, high accuracy when I come to these points. I'm just using the common geometry and letting the software uh, do its thing. So once it's done, I'm going to hit apply. I'm going to move to my registration and software here. I'm going to do a global registration. What it's going to do is look at all these frames and do a best fit. All right, so now that it's done, these are uh, aligned to each other, and I'm going to go ahead and let's uh, let's create a mesh. Um, follow it up. I'm going to clear these out. So here, I'm going to do a sharp fusion to give us our best detail, and uh, I can fill this with being watertight or filling with certain holes. Um, so I'm just going to do a, a basic uh, default setting and hit apply. All right, now that we have the scan done, uh, you do see that we do have these artifacts that are still in here. So let's go ahead and clear those out. I'm gonna go into my editing brush, and I'm actually go clear these ones out. And I'm not too worried about uh, deleting some of this data that's going around um, because it is a flat area. Uh, we, you know, don't need to worry about it too much. We're just going to do a quick full fill on this process. Um, the artifacts up here, maybe I could have put in a better position, um, but that's okay. We'll go through this process and erase everything out. Erase. All right, so now that we have those out of there, we need to fix these holes. So I'm gonna go into my fix hole section and I'm just gonna go ahead and click on all the holes that I wanna fill. And I could do those uh, smoothly or flat. So I'm just gonna make them, uh, let's go smooth. So smooth kind of made them uh, a little moundy so I'm not going to like that, so I'm just going to control Z out of here. Um, I noticed that I do have a little extra data on this little side, so let me edit this out really quick. A little flat, and I'm going to pick those again. holes much better um, if we don't like uh, the mounds here too much um, I'm, you can come in and uh, edit these and we can actually do a smoothing brush
This helps with any other artifacts as well that are, could be in that little area. And we can actually make this even a little bit smoother. All right, so I'm gonna go ahead and just get out of here. So we do have our mesh file here. This can be exported into another software um, and uh, taken in to do some more design. What I'm gonna do is I'm actually gonna delete some extra data here. And then I am going to show you one of the really cool tools in Artec Studio. And that is to create some um, uh, surfaces. So I'm gonna use my lasso tool here and I'm actually just gonna clean, clean out some data. These are extra data that we just don't need. Make it a little bit cleaner here. And last thing I'm gonna do is go into my tools. I'm actually gonna use my small objects filter and I'm gonna leave this biggest objects and apply. And that clears out anything else that's not attached to that big area. So what I wanna show you here too is in our construct, we do have the ability to do some primitive uh, uh, feature, uh, reverse engineering, but here I wanna do an auto surface and I am actually going to just highlight everything. And this estimates the number of patches. I'm gonna bring it down just a little bit low just so that we can get this process going faster. All right, and then we fit our surface right there. So um, this is a uh, CAD ready primitive auto surface. Um, we can actually, I doubled it. So. Uh, this can be exported directly into GeoMagic to go into SolidWorks. Uh, we can actually export this CAD object as, uh, sorry, take those as a step or IGES format, and we can export those out. Or there's a great partnership with Artec and GeoMagic, so I can actually export this out to GeoMagic DesignX or ControlX. Uh, so this is just a quick showing of the Artec Evo Light um, 3D scanner and uh, the ability to scan and create auto surfaces for creating custom made formats. Uh, you can click on the link below into our YouTube page and there's another link that actually shows the process of creating some custom made formats in GeoMagic Design X. Uh, please like and follow us on YouTube, Instagram, and Facebook. And if you have any questions, let us know. We'd love to do a demo for you and show you a little bit more about the Artec 3D scanners. Thank you for your time today. Have a great day.